y'all. My name is Dr. Michelle Clayman, and I'm one of the ADs here. And I'm Billy Blunt, Director of Admin Services for the Housing Office. And behind the camera there is Henry, who's one of our students at the U of A, who's running the camera for us, and he will be taking questions and comments as we go through the day. So Henry, I'll turn it to you. Yeah, for sure. And um, I'll be um, monitoring the chat. Uh, please save your questions until, uh, until the end, because we have a lot of questions that we've already been asked, and we, we may get through them. So first question, y'all, could you talk a little bit about the locations for the off-campus apartments and where they're located and uh, where they're at. Okay. So we're excited that this year we have four locations that uh, will house our students who are in uh, communities that are near the campus. And so uh, Ozark Villa is one of our communities. So it is primarily for um, our returning and transfer students um, who will be living in those communities. Um, we have the locale. Um, and the locale is uh, right off of Garland Street, so a really close walk to campus, which is adjacent to um, Lot 56, as most people, most students know it on campus. So, uh, Mozart Villa, the locale and the view are four bedroom apartments that will have their own private bathroom, and the Marshall apartments will be a four bedroom, two and a half bath apartment. So, uh, each of these apartments has some different amenities, bus routes, etc. as we go through our uh, today we'll talk more about what those uh, look like um, as we go through. But those are the four of the communities we have this this fall. Gotcha. Connection. All right, we're back, y'all. So, could you talk a little bit about the uh, the costs and the fees that are associated with like living off campus at these apartments? Yeah, of course. So, for the fees in the apartments, you will not pay fees at the actual locations unless you're utilizing amenities that are above and beyond. So like spray tanning, things of that nature that have a individual uh, price, then you'll pay a fee for that. But for the typical fees of like trash, things of that nature, that is encompassed in what you're paying um, through your housing portal with us. Gotcha. So next question, could you talk a little bit about parking at the different, uh, at the different apartments? Yeah. So for our parking, for our students who are at Ozark Villa, the locale and the view. Parking is provided um, to you as uh, through and is paid through um, your fees uh, that you will pay through university housing. Um, for these property complexes, there are obviously different setups for each of them, but if you, you will be giving um, either a parking fob to get into a parking deck or a parking pass, etc on your move-in day when you get to the apartment complex. So they will take care of that for you on your move-in day. Uh, for students in Marshall, you, uh, parking is not provided on site. Uh, however, there are a couple of options for you that you can use. If you are a Marshall resident, um, you, one option is to purchase what's called the Green Pass, um, which is would be available for uh, students who are commuting to campus, but also for you guys as well. Um, at Lot 56. Now, Lot 56, if you're not familiar, is the basically the large commuter parking lot on the very south end of campus, across the street from Chick Fil A. It's where a lot of people know where it is. But also for students at the Marshall, it's basically adjacent and across the street to the property. Um, so that's one option. Another option is there is an economy lot, which is just to the west of uh, the Marshall apartment complex. So maybe a block, block and a half away, and students can use the economy lot as well. Uh, two advantages to the economy lot is one, there's a direct transit bus that goes from the economy lot back up to the center of campus and just runs that route consistently. And then also for the students who park in the economy lot, you do not have to move your vehicle um, for game day events for football, men's and women's basketball. So the, the advantage to that lot is it's and also cost efficient uh, compared to lot 56 so some convenience is there if you want to use that um, if you don't have a car you certainly don't have to purchase any kind of permit you can just literally um, cross the walk cross mlk boulevard and you'll be on campus gotcha thank you before we ask the next question um, i meant to mention in the beginning but we'll be uploading this onto youtube with uh, timestamps for the questions so um, if you happen to miss anything or just tuning in now, um, you can refer back to the YouTube video, which will be published in the coming days. Um, for the next question, uh, Michelle, could you talk a little bit about community, um, uh, what the community will be like at these apartments in terms of programs and staff members? Of course, so housing is providing some stuff 
staff members on site to all of these locations. We have what are called community connectors. They are housing staff that will be putting on programs and providing one-on-one -on -one touch bases and things of that nature throughout the school year. Um, we also have a professional staff that is overseeing this program. They're, a, they're called the coordinator for community connectors. Um, they will be present in all of these apartment complexes and help with those programs. We're gonna have a robust um, list of programs and things of that nature within the first couple of weeks of school. And we'll be providing um, monthly programs for each of these different apartment Gotcha. Um, next question, could you talk a little bit about the amenities at these, at these apartments? Like what are the unique features about them? So with most of the apartment complexes, there you will find additional features um, that would be traditionally available, available at the Hyper and other locations on campus. You'll find those at your apartment complex. So things like pools, community rooms, et cetera. Um, as a resident of that community, you have access to those. So if there's a, access into a gate into the pool let's say you'll you'll receive that uh, access point when you check in uh, for the apartment complex and you have the ability to use those uh, many of them have community spaces grills etc that can you use as well um, as michelle mentioned earlier there are some additional amenities but such as spray tan options things like that that are additional costs but those would be additional costs to any resident um, who's living there, whether they're contracted to the first year housing or not. So each apartment complex is a little bit different in what they offer and, and what they uh, show, but as a resident, you certainly have the ability to use those, and we'd encourage you to use those to kind of help build that community, as Michelle was talking about earlier, um, and get to know other students. Gotcha. And I just also asked a question. Um, just a reminder, we're going to wait until the end to ask questions, so feel free to ask it uh, again then. I'll be sure to scroll to make sure we didn't miss it. Um, our next question, could you talk a little bit about um, pets in these apartments, uh, whether they're like pets, emotional support animals, could you explain a little bit about that? Yeah, so with our contracts, you cannot have pets in any of these apartment complexes. If you need an emotional support animal or a service animal, go through our accessibility office and we'll be able to guide you through that process and um, get that specific type of animal with you. Um, but you must go through that office in order to get that approval. Gotcha, thank you. Um, next, could so you talk a little bit about what we should be bringing to these apartments, uh, whether they're like sheets, pots and pans, shower curtains? Yeah, so as you go into your apartment complex, uh, it's much like your residence hall room. So you'll have built-in closets, You'll have, a, in your case, a guys in the apartments, a full-size bed um, in the apartment, so that would be a little bit different than a residence hall room that would have an extra long twin. You guys will have a full-size um, mattress and bed in your room. Also, other things that you'll find are, uh, you'll see refrigerators, uh, microwaves, stoves. So it is set up as a true, like, an apartment where you would have a, a full-size kitchen um, and then bathroom spaces. But there are some things that we want you, you guys as an apartment that you'll need to think to bring with you um, on moving day. First off, the bed it being a full-size bed, so make sure that you purchase full-size sheets um, for your bed and then a comforter, pillows, etc., that you would want to put onto your bed. Um, you do have a kitchen provided with a stove, again, microwave, and, a, and then full-size refrigerator. Um, with that being said, in the apartment, you'll want to make sure that you bring pots and pans, silverware, um, you know, maybe water pitchers, different things like that, just things that you would have at your house if you were going to cook. Um, you know, we would encourage most students to purchase um, a meal plan, whether that be the traditional residence hall meal plan or one of the off-campus meal plans. Um, that'll give you a chance to, to have community with students on campus um, as you're going to class and different things like that. But if you do occasionally want to cook in your apartment, you know, think about pots, pans, silverware, um, you know, those type of things that go with that. Um, also, one of the most important things we want you to remember, bring a shower curtain. Mm -hmm. uh, they are not provided uh, in the apartment complex, um, and so that is one thing you'll need to bring with you. Um, otherwise, your first shower will be very adventurous with the water flow. Gotcha. All right, next question. Could you talk a little bit about bus routes and transportation to and from these apartments? Yes, yeah, so all of these locations except the view is part of our bus transit system right now. You can go um, on the transit website to look at the different routes. We also have an app called Passio, I think I'm pronouncing that right, um, and that gives you lifetime feed of where the buses are at, 
how long you are going to have to wait at your bus stop in order um, to get that to pick up that bus. And so it's a great app for you to utilize. Um, for the view, they have shuttles that the apartment provides that takes you onto campus. They are pretty much walking distance to from, to um, the south end of campus. I believe that's south, right? Yes. Yeah. That's yeah. South. yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not good with directions, mm -hmm. um, but. Um, they have a shuttle that'll take you to campus and then you can pick up our transit system from there. Um, so it'll be very easy to, to move from your apartment onto campus. Gotcha. And then a few more questions <coughs> left. Um, can you talk a little bit about move-in day and what the process for uh, moving into these apartments is like? Yeah. So we're excited as you, as you get through and get ready to, um, uh, for move-in um, to go through. So on your move-in day, you will go directly to your apartment complex to check in. Um, you will go to the office um, unless there is you know, something set up special, maybe outside that the apartment complex does just to manage the crowds. But you'll go to your office uh, for the apartment complex. You'll check in your keys. Um, several apartment complexes are basically creating a student portal. Um, so they may have sent you a form to fill out so they can create a portal for you, which if you wanted to purchase a tanning bed extra, a lot of times you do that through their app. They'll also send communications of different, different uh, information that they need to send out through that app um, to go through. But on move-in day, we'll show up at the location, uh, go to the main office and check in. A lot of them are around the pool area uh, that we found. The offices are really close, so if you're trying to look for it, and, it's usually, if you'll go to that common area, you'll usually find the office area um, to go through. For several of our students who did early, uh, went ahead and early and signed up for their arrival time, um, you went ahead and got your hang tag in the mail. Um, one of the common questions we've got, if, uh, if I have that, do I have to come back to campus and park that? You do not. If you're um, at Ozark Villa, the locale, the view, they'll take care of your parking on moving day where you're going to park for the fall. Um, again, students at the Marshall parking is not provided, so once you've moved in, you'll either go to lot 56 or the economy lot um, if you purchase the pass, assuming you obviously have a car um, to go through with that. So your arrival hang tag um, for moving in is just um, for you guys. The apartment complex won't use that specifically um, for their move in, but uh, we have worked with each of the complexes to kind of help manage the move-in as, as efficiently as what you would have if you were on campus. So we've intentionally, you have a move-in time, we ask that you please come at that time, so that way that the number of people showing up at one time is somewhat spread out and you will you will, um, avoid having a long line on move-in day. So, but we're excited, our community connectors um, are gonna be around on move-in day, our full-time full staff members work with community will be around um, our marketing team has done some uh, good pre-work and they're working on a welcome basket for you guys um, that maybe the first week of school we got a couple things we're waiting to get in will be there that your community connectors will be able to share with you it's kind of a welcome to the community also a chance to get to know you um, as well so uh, we're excited we want your moving today day to just be just as exciting as a student who may be moving into Humphreys um, and you'll see our, our staff out around along with the staff of the community Awesome. Well, uh, thanks y'all for answering all those questions. Now we're going to take some questions from our audience. Um, this one was from a little bit ago. Someone was asking about the need for uh, renter's insurance. Could you uh, touch on that a little bit? Yeah, I would say definitely get it. Um, <laughs> but just as best practices, it's really important that you have renter's insurance. If an accident happens, like say you're moving in and you put a box on the stove and it accidentally bumps a, a knob and things catch on fire, that can be hundreds of thousands of dollars. So I would definitely encourage you to get renter's insurance. Check with, if your family already has insurance for a home, you can check with that. Sometimes it is bundled in that if there's some type of umbrella insurance, things of that nature. Uh, and um, yes, I would definitely get it if you can. Gotcha. <laughs> Next question, at the locale, do they get access to the scooter slash bike locked garage area? I'm not exactly sure. Do you happen to know uh, what that is? The not quite sure. I am 83% confident that you do. Um, they had mentioned that. Um, I know that it's like on the bottom of the garage, but that amenity should be a part of the package as well. Gotcha. 
Next question, where on campus does the VIEW shuttle drop students off? What if you have a night class and the shuttle is no longer running? So for the VIEW from, I think they have different shuttle stops on campus. I know there's one um, around the engineering business area. I've seen, I've seen their bus drop off. The union is the main stop. Right. Yeah, yeah, Chris, Christopher, our marketing person, just said a, a lot of the shuttle buses from off campus, there is a union station basically um, right around the union. A lot of the shuttle stops will go there for a couple of reasons. One, it's center of campus, so it's a great drop off location. You can quickly get to your, to your other uh, locations um, to go through there. As for the, the shuttle schedule, obviously the view is just right down the hill, so literally just walk down the hill and you're on campus. So uh, walking is, you know, maybe an option that a lot of students choose to do. I, I, I know as I drive into work um, daily, I, I pass by the locale and I see lots of their students who live there walking to campus. Um, so that's very, uh, I think it's a very common thing to, to, to do. But uh, you may, uh, that'd be a great question on move-in day to kind of ask what their shuttle schedules are and if they run and um, how they accommodate students with live classes. And I might point out also that if you're looking at the website right now for parking, they're probably seeing summer schedules, which are very abbreviated compared to what they'll see this fall. Gotcha. All right. Next question. I've called lots of apartments and they are all sold out. Can a graduate, can a graduate student stay in the apartment on campus? So I assume they're referring to, to Duncan um, in this case. Uh, unfortunately, right now, um, we are completely full with our housing um, mm -hmm. for uh, returning and transfer students, and we are not um, currently accepting applications for this fall as we, as we are full and all of our space uh, availability is currently gone. Gotcha. Thank you. Will there be more buses running the loops past the apartments buildings? Usually there is only one bus that runs over there. And that, that second part was also a little bit of a question. Yeah, I know that, uh, I know our student affairs office has a list of how many students are at each location and they have shared that with transit and parking. Um, I, I know transit and parking is working very hard on trying to make the bus routes um, as most effective as they can and, and also kind of an awareness. I know there's been a lot of talk about that. Uh, Michelle had a great point about that Passio to Go app. Um, you could go to the transit and parking website at, U, at the U of A. Uh, go to their website and there's a location there you can see how to download that app and so um, you know I, I think for the first couple weeks the students kind of figure it out um, you figure out your schedule you'll find out what's the best time to catch the bus how early you need to to get there and, and then again you know uh, three of the four locations are adjacent or very very close to campus so I think you'll you know walking may be an option that you just decide to do to um, out of convenience for yourself gotcha Next question, are trash cans provided at the view? Trash cans are not provided in any of the locations. Okay, gotcha. Next question, in the housing portal, there's a code for a room assignment. Will we know exactly where to go when we go to the complex office to sign in? So when you go to the complex office uh, on the on move-in day, uh, I would imagine most of the communities will have some signage up that will direct students to the office. Um, once you've completed that, you'll have the opportunity. Uh, they should have maps and staff there. We'll have staff there as well uh, to kind of point you and direct you to uh, where the closest parking place, et cetera, is for, for your move-in day experience uh, to go through. Gotcha. And when you put in the address to any of these locations, it takes you straight to their leasing office. So if you're using Google Maps or your iPhone map, um, it, it typically is dropping you right at the leasing office, and that's what you're looking for. Gotcha. So this is a reference to when we were talking about parking earlier. At the locale, do we have a specific parking spot or do we park wherever? Uh, the locale, I actually asked their management the other day about some, we got some specific questions about the garage uh, and they have some street surface parking as well. Um, they said that they were going to work on that. They were actually working through the final logistics of that. Um, right now, and when you actually came in for move in, they would finalize that process for you. How, uh, if they were going to designate spots, or if they were, if it was going to be open with access pass. So um, they were working on finishing that right now. You'll have you'll know the information on your actual move in day. Gotcha. 
Next question. When we move in, do we move our cars to the same lot as those who are moving into dorms, or do we have a different designated spot to leave our cars? Uh, so it, it, for students at the apartment complexes, you will, if you're not at the Marshall, if you're at the View locale at Ozark Villa, uh, if you, if you have parking on site, pay through through your student contract and you will park on site. So mm -hmm. once you park, you do not have to move your car, you will keep your car at the apartment complex. And then for students at the Marshall, once you unload, um, then you will either go to lot 56 or the economy lot. Gotcha. Next question. If we are at the Marshall and signed up at and signed a lot parking pass, is that something we would need to pick up on campus? This may be a parking and transit question. Would you happen to know? I, I, I think where they're going with this, Michelle, so it, I think a lot of times when students are at colleges, they think I'm going to get a, a decal, you know, that goes on my windshield. Uh, the University of Arkansas does license plate recognition. Um, so when you go online and park, uh, purchase your parking decal, um, you don't get a physical decal, it's attached to your license plate. Um, and so your license plate is what is read to give you uh, authorization to a specific zone. Mm -hmm. um, so there's no physical decal that you would pick up if you're in lot 56 or economy, it's, it's attached to your license plates, gives you access to that lot. Gotcha. Next question. That's a good question. This, yeah, these are lots of good questions. There's a, I'm reading this one right now because it's a little long. Um, they were saying that they're an exchange, uh, exchange student um, in Ozark Villa from August to December. Um, and they said that they heard we have to make 12 months contracts and when we leave that time, we have to find another person to stay on your contract. Um, okay. do, yeah, I, yeah. Know, I know where you're going with this, uh, this question. So all of the, it's a, it's a good question. Uh, there, uh, a lot of the um, other apartment complexes uh, uh, across the, the, the Fayetteville community, when you sign a contract, it's for 12 months. Your lease with the, with the university that we've negotiated with the complexes ends in May. So when you have traditional move out in May, um, you would go ahead and move out of your apartment complex at the same, you know, at the same amount of time that a residence hall student was. Uh, those two, basically June and July, those two summer months are not part of your, your campus plan, uh, are not part of your contract, so you don't have to figure out a way to pay for those over the summer. Your lease is for the true 10 month period and will end in, in, end in May of, let's see, I guess we're 2023 at this point. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Um. Do you have any advice for students who are having a hard time finding apartments? So I assume um, finding apartments um, uh, besides the, the, the four locale view and, and the others. Yeah, we've, we've gotten that question a lot at our office because we are full um, with, with our current on-campus on capacity and have obviously, um, while we're here, um, have, have used some off-campus properties as well to, to house uh, that. So. Um, you know, our, our, we don't have a place that our office is recommending necessarily for students to go to. Um, what uh, we are finding is it, from conversations we're hearing from other students that it seems like a lot of the properties that are really close to campus are full for the fall, may have a waiting list, etc. Um, so the, the great thing about the bus route, I know we keep kind of coming back to that, but uh, uh, the bus route goes all the way up to the mall area in North Fayetteville. Um, it goes a little bit out to the, some areas kind of to the east and west and so while there may not be some properties immediately adjacent to campus that are full, there may be some uh, properties up around the mall and those type of areas um, that you can check in. Obviously, if you don't have a car, you need to be aware to make sure where your nearest bus route is uh, to, to go through, but um, our, our current capacity on campus is full and so you know, we would encourage, you may have to kind of expand out a little bit into kind of the North Fayetteville Mall area, um, some other communities that aren't immediately adjacent to campus. Gotcha. Next question. Will transport be provided for off-campus students going through recruitment, i.e. is there, are there dedicated buses running that week? Uh, that is a question for, you may want to 
talk, speak to the office of group life. Um, we would defer you to them to do that. I know they're planning their recruitment schedule and um, they uh, are aware that there are a number of students off campus. So that's a great question, but I would defer that to Office of Greek Life to make sure they give you the most accurate up-to-date information. Gotcha. Do you have an estimate on how many freshmen are living off campus? Uh, yeah, there are. Um, so we have about 700 first-year students who are living in apartment communities that are close to or adjacent to campus. Um, so as you know, as Michelle talked about with staffing earlier, we've been very intentional about having community connectors, full-time staff working. Uh, we want to give those students, while they are in an apartment setting, as much of a you know traditional first-year experience, get them connected to the U of A community as possible. Uh, so whether and you know one and the other thing we try to be very intentional about keeping those um, students together in the same same comp small a very small number of complexes as possible to uh, help grow that community. Gotcha. So we have two or three more questions, um, and thank you all for answering answering these. Um, do we have utensils on off campus for cooking, or will they have to buy them themselves? Yeah, they will need to purchase those yourself. Uh, will we have RAs at the apartments? If so, what is their role or um, what, is, what is a similar role to RA at, at these apartments? So the similar role to RA at the apartments are these, the community connectors or C2 if you'd like to mm -hmm. call them that. They will be doing programming, one-on-one -on -one conversations and providing that same uh, personal touch that you would get from an RA here. Gotcha. All right, next question. Sorry about that. Um, do we need command strips to hang things on the wall? That's generally recommended, I assume. Uh, so what, what, what advice we would give you for an apartment complex is really the same advice we'd give you if you were moving into a traditional residence hall. Um, the room needs to look the way it looked when you move out the way, you, the way you did it move in. So if you do hang anything on the wall, et cetera, make sure that at the end of the year when you move out, uh, and you take those items down off the wall that you're, you're, you're careful and intentional that you are creating damage um, for that. Um, you know, a couple things that I think we've learned from doing this a little bit in the past um, for students um, a, a, as they move out, you know, just make sure toward the end that you've unloaded your dishwasher. I know I walked into an apartment last year where a student left all of their dishes oh, um, in, in the apartment, clean out the dryer vent. Um, those are things that you just don't necessarily think about um, to go through, taking out your toiletry items, etc., uh, to, to go through. So yeah, you, you will need to, to purchase those, but just think about if you were moving to a residence hall room and you want it to look the same way when you move out the way you did in. So sweet, mop, make sure you take all your items out, etc. Gotcha. We just got two more questions coming in. Um, at Christmas slash end of the semester, uh, do we need to move out of the apartment like we would in the residence halls? That's a great question. No, you do not. Mm -hmm. They will remain open that whole time, so you can stay in there as long as you please. Awesome. Well, until May. <laughs> <laughs> at uh, Ozark Villa, do we have our own room and uh, bathroom for, uh, and they mentioned that they're an exchange student. Yes, Ozark Villa are four bedroom, four bath apartments, uh, and so you would have your own bathroom. Gotcha. So that's all. We just got caught up to all the questions. Thank you all for asking those. Uh, let us know if you have any more. Um, but one question I have for you all, what advice would you give to um, incoming students, whether they're new or returning? I would say get connected to the institution as much as you can. Um, if you go to HogSync, um, you can sign in as long as you have you you work email and you can find all of our RSOs that's our registered student organizations and they have anything from chess club to identity based clubs and that will really help you find your people to be connected here so I encourage you to get connected right away um, because it's easy to get lost when there's 30,000 of us and we don't want that um, so we want to try to get you back on campus as much as possible so please Go to HogSync right now. Find those groups now. We have a lot of events happening during A week um, to taste help of you. Mm -hmm. Yes, we have yes. Taste of Avail where you're going mm -hmm. to be able to see some of our um, local areas and taste some of that food. Um, we have a lot of events happening during A week so that you can get connected to the different areas on campus. I also encourage you to use the amenities that we have here on campus. You can go to UREC and exercise and utilize our facilities, and we have some great facilities. 
Um, there are some additional things that you can purchase too with UREC. You can do outdoor activities and things of that nature. So please come back on campus and get connected here. Gotcha. Do you have any advice for us, Billy? Uh, Michelle said it well, just get connected. Um, I, I think if, if I were a parent of a student um, in an apartment complex, I would certainly encourage them to get a meal plan, to go eating the dining halls. I mean, it's kind of the heart of campus, the dining hall when it's packed and it's full and all, you know, all your friends are there. Um, it's a great opportunity to just kind of be a part and convenience and kind of takes off that stress of, oh, I gotta go make a meal. You just kind of, yeah, you kind of do that and, and use it to be a part of the campus community. So, um, but I know, I think Michelle said it much more eloquently than mm -hmm. I did. Just get involved and um, find, find your niche. Gotcha. And I will say, ask the person that makes your favorite meal how to do that. So then you can have a little bit of taste of home while you're here. So get that recipe, practice it a couple times, um, and that'll really help when you feel homesick um, to have a little taste of home. That's really great. That's like the most unique piece of advice I've ever heard. I wish I, I, wish I knew that. <laughs> like learn how to make, yeah. Man. Um, so we have one more question, I think, before we uh, sign out. Are the beds at the apartments still twin slash twin XL? Or would I need to prepare to get a bigger size comforter and sheets? I believe you mentioned they were full size beds, right? Correct, they are full size beds. So mm -hmm. where in the residence hall, you have extra long twins and in the apartment complex, you'll have full size beds. So yeah. be able to starfish. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, um, and I, I know, I said that was the last one. We just got two more, uh, two more coming in, so. Uh, are we only allowed two cars for moving at the apartments or is it the same for apartments and residence halls? Uh, for the apartments, I would encourage you to limit it to two cars. Uh, there, the, the complexes, you know, they're, they're still limited with parking. There, there's only an infinite amount of that, so a uh, finite amount rather of parking. So I would, uh, I would encourage you to just to try to limit it yourself to two cars, just like you would on a campus. Gotcha. Um, and then someone was asking about meal plans. Does the meal plan only include restaurants on campus? Uh, so there are there are really th two types of meal plans you can purchase. Um, you can purchase the traditional residence hall meal plan, um, where you have swipes at the dining hall plus dining dollars that you could use at Chick Fil A, Slims, and other locations. Um, or you can purchase a wide variety of off campus meal plans. Uh, some are more heavily leaned toward dining hall experiences and less dining dollars, and others have lots of dining dollars and less dining hall swipes. So there's a really wide variety of those off-campus meal plans, uh, which you want to do. Uh, you can always go up at any point with a meal plan. Um, so if you decide uh, that you, you realize I, I didn't buy a big enough one, you can always go back and buy additional dining dollars and, and uh, meals, et cetera, meal plans, et cetera, if you want to um, throughout the semester. Gotcha. And they also have an app and you can pre-order in some locations. So mm -hmm. if you wanted to pre-order your coffee or things of that nature, you can do that. So while you're commuting in on the bus, you can put in that order and the coffee will be ready for you. That's really good for a hill coffee in the morning because those lines can get very, very long. <laughs> Um, and so this was a question that we got before about command strips, uh, needing command strips to hang pictures and generally, uh, like we said before, command strips are recommended in anything to make it so that the, uh, the apartment looks the same as it, as it was before. But those were, um, those are all the questions. So thank y'all so much for, for answering all those and you can, you can sign us out. All right. Well, thank you guys. And we can't wait to see you in next week. <laughs> yeah. Welcome home. <laughs> thank you.